Welcome back to my classroom. This is Justin. Today I'm going to talk about one sample t-test. A one sample t-test can be used when you have a population uh, and you have a sample, and you need to check whether your sample belongs to this population itself. Theoretically, okay, theoretically. Uh, that means the equation of the one sample t-test is same as a usual t-test. So t equal to the mean value, and is it different from the mu value? Okay, and uh, divide by um, standard error that means standard deviation of the sample square divided by root n so this is the equation of uh, t-test uh, this is m sorry both look same right m mean of the sample and the mean of the population like that okay so now what is this mean of the population generally you don't know this part so what uh, generally when you do this test you may have a value instead of something like 100 okay now that's a, assuming that that's a value of the population that means i know the value of the population and i need to check whether my sample belongs to that particular group that's a concept of uh, the one sample t-test now uh, for example let us say a situation where i need to check whether uh, my uh, sample uh, that a class that i have a group of students their intelligence is um, average for example i say that average intelligence of the intelligence i'm just keeping i okay average intelligence of my class is same as 100 that's my null hypothesis and average intelligence of my class is not same as 100 either significantly different than 100 or significantly lesser than i mean higher or lesser than 100 this could be a condition of a uh, one uh, sample t-test here this 100 is a value and theoretically this 100 represent uh, the population mean theoretically uh, so you in the real time situation you will have a value like this and what is this s s is a sample um, standard deviation and n is a sample size this is uh, based on an assumption that means population scores will be almost same as the sample scores if it is uh, if you have used any uh, the large sample concept and the 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 uh, bigger uh, random sampling procedure so using that logic s value will be same as the population um, standard deviation and n is uh, the whichever measure standard deviation that we have used here if it's a population n would be population number if you have used s here then it's a, a sample a size number so let us take a situation here uh, the mean of the sample so this is my sample mean score is 80 and uh, standard uh, deviation or s value s value is um, basically um 10 and the st uh, number is 100 or yeah that's fine 10 and 100 like that uh, explanation sake you can easily work with this data in that line okay now this is standard deviation okay standard deviation s of the population now let us do the test now so you have a uh, you have the con condition here so t equal to the value 80 minus 100 divided by standard deviation score is uh, 100 square of 10 100 and root of 10 that is um, let's be 10 that means uh, this value will be 20 divided by um, 10 divided 100 divided by 10 like that okay I just use this value so that I can easily calculate without any kind of manual or calculator like that. Okay, so this value is 20 divided by 10 and the score is 2. Fine. Now, so I have a t value that is 2 here. Okay, now what does this tell me? This tells me um, the, a, the value 80, see that this value 80 is a 2 standard deviation away from 100. So, it is actually 20 values away from 100 but in terms of standard deviation it's two standard deviation away from the 100 towards the left side i mean the negative side now why do i talk about this two standard deviation instead of 20 deviation from the center that means center point is 100 uh, because when i say this uh, two standard deviation away from the 100 and if i plot in a t distribution uh, I can understand what's the chance to that that particular thing to occur. For example, if this is the um, t distribution, okay, with a specific degree of freedom here, degree of freedom is n minus one. If I have one group, take out the degree of freedom, uh, freedom of one observation, then you have 99 values independent observations. So df is 
99 so when you take df as 99 um, the curve is almost like a z curve that means uh, it's almost a z test and uh, you can the logic is same in the both condition and it follows a normal distribution okay now this center point is 100 this is the population mean and the value here is 80 this is 80 value now this difference is two standard deviation difference okay now my question is why do i talk in that line because uh, if i get a value like um, here i can calculate what's the chance to stoker okay now that need a little more complicated equation so uh, when you do um, you know like using softwares softwares is very clearly tell us like what is this area okay that need little um, logarithm kind of uh, concept or sorry logarithm table that kind of uh, that means the area under t, ter, t curve that tables are required now usually how do you do this uh, inferential statistics using t test i mean um, the the uh, the judgment of whether the score, this value is significantly different or not that's based on we first uh, decide what's the alpha value so alpha value is 0 0.05 assuming that chance for null hypothesis to be true is uh, 0 0.05 we keep this as a cutoff point generally we keep this as a cutoff point that's the level of significance so let us say level of significance for a degree of freedom 99 something like 0 0.05 somewhere here okay now this value tend to be 0 0.05 that's what you are looking at this much area is 0 0.05 and the entire other area is 95 like this yeah 0.95 or 95 like that either 5 percentage and 95 percentage or 0 0.05 or 0.95 same logic together it will be 100 now uh, this particular point uh, that means this much area 0 0.0 uh, 0 0.05 this tend to be uh, 1.96 Originally, it has to be 1.98 when you take the 99 as a degree of freedom. But uh, you know, like when sample size is bigger, something like um, infinity, this value tend to be 1.96. We generally work with this 1.96 itself. Or to be very precise, when you use a table, uh, you can you may get a value 1.98 uh, for a degree of freedom of 99. Now look at this particular value here. So if this value if our um, the value that 80 that we are calculated if it is uh, 1.96 standard deviation away from 100 that means chance to that occur is 0 0.05 that means 5 percent chance it's a rare chance you know like we don't work with that possibility so we say that oh i think when you keep a possibility of 0 0.05 uh, level of significance or chance for alpha error type 1 error uh, now i think that assuming that okay now i think that this 80 is significantly lesser than 100 so this sample uh, really don't belong to a normal population i mean a population where 100 is average uh, intelligence see that now my judgment is this could be wrong i don't have enough evidence to support this i may go for this particular thing it's a two-tailed test okay both area will be taken in the concentration it's a two-tailed test basically what if i need to work with this level of significance that is 0 0.01 so 0 0.01 level of significance is basically um, the standard deviation difference tend to be um, uh, two point now this was 1.96 or 98 standard deviation now this one is 2.6 standard deviation away from the mean now that tend to be somewhere here 2.9 2.6 standard deviation okay now my values in this point that means you keep a confidence interval of 99 bigger one and chance for alpha error type 1 as one possibility now one percentage that means 0 0.01 as a value now in this context to say that it's a rare chance to this occur this value has to be uh, bigger than this i mean um, in terms of absolute value something like 0 0.3 0 0.4 like that but my value is two standard deviation away from it so now i have to say that if you consider 0 0.01 level of significance the, the standard deviation has to be more than 2.6 standard deviation that means more than 2.6 standard deviation away from the mean that means three standard deviation four standard deviation five standard deviation like that in that condition you, you could have uh, uh, accept or go for suggest for the um, uh, rejecting the null hypothesis and accepting the alternative hypothesis like that but in this context my t value is two standard deviation now if you consider this particular level of significance i cannot do this i have to go for accepting null hypothesis if you take a condition like 
um, level of significance 0.01 that means 99 percentage of confidence interval if you take uh, when you consider the chances for uh, uh, alpha error okay yeah this is the concept of one sample t test i really don't know what kind of questions can be asked in this context maybe um calculation of degree of freedom it's n minus one and maybe uh, a question like uh, sample have maybe compared to the population and which test has to be used something like that anyway what are the assumptions of this test you uh, this is a parametric test the sample the whatever sample that we have that has to be normally distributed and the um, the data has to be independent that means observations in the sample shouldn't be dependent kind of sample every observation has to be independent each other and uh, there shouldn't be any extreme values uh, among the data you have 100 scores here there shouldn't be any extreme values in that one so these are the major assumptions of uh, one sample t test so theoretically it is comparing one po one means mean of the sample and mean of the population yeah that's it bye from my classroom